What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. So on the video today, what I really want to focus on is a trending haircut uh, from Kristen Stewart. The cool thing about this cut, I find it fascinating. It's a 90s grunge feel to it. It's got some disconnection. It's got undercut. It's got, um, it almost looks like a mohawk in some angles. So let's assume since this is the Kristen Stewart haircut tutorial video, um, you're not a stylist and you're watching this video. A couple things I want you guys to understand. When you go to a professional stylist, whether you want this Kristen Stewart haircut or not, or you're just looking at it because you like her, whatever the case may be, uh, when you go into a stylist, it's important to break down as much as you can what you like about that haircut. So when somebody brings in a picture, let's say this picture, for instance, I'm going to ask them the questions that have to do with what do you like about the haircut? What do you not like about this haircut? Because you're not Kristen Stewart. You're not going to wear this haircut exactly like her and your head might not look like hers. So there's a lot of things that you're going to want to alter or change. And that's where a professional stylist comes in. You shouldn't just grab a pair of clippers and try to mimic this haircut. It's not going to work. You're not going to look like Kristen Stewart at the end because you're not Kristen Stewart. You're you. So with all that being said, I want to break down the things that I look at within a haircut and how I kind of assess it. So the first picture showcases the right hand side of her head. If somebody brings in a photo of a celebrity, especially a current celebrity haircut, I try to find multiple angles. There's the Internet has all different photos. So they bring in one picture of that haircut, you try to find a few more angles so you can really assess what that haircut's all about. We look at the Kristen Stewart haircut. We look at, we found the right hand side. So I've got the right hand side picture. A couple things I noticed about the cut already. Um, it definitely has a very messy lived in feel to it. There's not a lot of precise shape to this haircut. This is a pretty rugged haircut, which is what makes it so unique and cool. I think a couple inspirations I think come uh, about with this haircut. The undercut inspiration, which has been over the last like five years, a lot of undercuts. Uh, and then you have the mohawk inspiration from this as well. The reason why this kind of becomes more of an undercut than a mohawk is, in my opinion, is that uh, it sits pretty low on her head. So it's a really wide. If it was going to be a mohawk, it's very, very wide. Um, so that's the first thing. So how would I take my sectioning? I'm going to show you guys in the full tutorial where I'm going to section her hair, but I'm going to section it a lot deeper. And then that's where that disconnection is going to start. So way below that parietal ridge area. Then when I look at the second photo, it shows um, the left hand side of her head. When you look at the left hand side, that's where she pushes all the weight. That's where it all kind of lives. You have to understand that when you're taking this cut and you're cutting the top of the hair, you want to be able to have maybe a versatile top because she could wear it either way. Everything looks pretty balanced in that way. But then you also want to create a ton of texture so it doesn't sit super heavy when you push it off to that one side. So you have all the weight sitting over uh, from that deep parting all the way over to the left hand side. So you're going to want to take that weight out in the haircut. So now let's take a look at the very front angle that, that we found. So when you look at the front angle, she just wears it kind of back and swooped over to the side. You could kind of see that from the first two angles, but this is a good clear look that you can see where that undercut kind of sits underneath and both sides are symmetrical. That's a key thing to look for. So I'm looking at where do I want to make those partings when I go in to do the cut and then she swoops it back off to the one side. So again, I want to remove that weight from the side that she's going to push it over to. And I really want it to be versatile again so that she could wear it both ways if she wanted. And then the last photo, this is where it really brings in this fun part that I can't wait to show you guys how to cut, which is the very back and it gets a little bit long off to the one side. So when she's looking at you straight on, you can see these pieces kind of flipping out. That's one of my favorite things about this haircut. When I first started cutting hair in 2004, it was kind of a trend in the hairdresser community, at least to where we had kind of like a little soccer mullet. I feel like this brings that back a little bit. She's got kind of like just in the corners, it kicks out a little bit. It's still nice and short right behind the ear and then right down in the nape, it's nice and short as well. So it's just these edges uh, right in the corners that get a little bit longer, which I really think is, is super cool. Can't wait to break down this haircut even more for you guys. I hope it helped getting a better look into the things that I look at uh, in a haircut and looking at multiple pictures. Those of you guys that aren't stylists that are watching this video, I, I encourage you not to watch it to learn how to cut this haircut. That's not what it's about but learn that there's a lot that goes into a lot of thought that goes into these haircuts. And I would also encourage everyone out there to not get the Kristen Stewart haircut. Don't take that to your stylist, find a professional, find things that you like in a haircut, mix and match haircuts together of things that you like. And you're going to have a lot more success when you go into a salon because you're going to be better prepared with multiple images of things that you like so that your stylist can have more success 
uh, giving you the haircut that you want. Take inspiration from these celebrity haircuts because that's what's important is finding things that you like, multiple different avenues, putting them together to create your individual look. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my videos that I'm putting out all of the time. And also hit that like button before you forget. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started with the tutorial. Here we go. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off the sectioning breakdown is pretty simple. It's an arced section from the parietal ridge down to the occipital bone. And then I create a triangle by going across the crown of the head uh, to create that triangle shape in the back. And then I have a big thick uh, section on the very top of the head, which we'll go over when we get to that point. So. To start the cut, we're gonna start right in the center back. That's gonna become our stationary guide. So you wanna cut this uh, pretty short, about an inch away from the head to create this certain look. And then everything's gonna be over directed to that center back section, uh, which is going to push weight and length behind the ear. It's gonna push a lot of weight and length, but I'm gonna show you guys a trick after we do that to create um, that kind of unique uh, mullet-y, fashion mullet kind of effect that the haircut has in the end result. So you just keep following through half inch sections, bring it back to that stationary guide. And then uh, I'll show you guys what we do after that. So I do that final cut. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop the hair up and over direct it right behind the ear, which is going to create my guide for the next section. But also that over direction up um, takes out the weight at that point, but then pushes the weight down to the corner again. So now you end up with the longest point just being in that corner. And then you have the two shorter points uh, behind the ear and down at the nape. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So the one thing you will notice is that I'm pulling the hair towards me. Uh, my body position did not change, uh, just the way that I'm combing changed. And then at the very end, I scoop everything, bring it up to behind the ear, and I cut it to create that length in the very corner. So you can see how those two corners pop out, and that's how we created the back. Now we're gonna move into the side section. This is gonna be pretty simple as well, just staying with a traveling guide now and working my way along that arc section all the way through taking half inch partings, bringing it back to the previous and traveling across the head. So we want a consistent line all the way across and just consistent length all the way through. One thing you'll notice is as I work my way towards the front of the head, what I'm doing is taking very small sections. I don't uh, get too extreme uh, with because the, the thicker the section, the more over direction you create. So you won't get a consistent line horizontally, if that makes sense to you guys. So think about it. Uh, you're not only cutting the hair vertically, like I'm holding it vertical, but I'm creating a horizontal line at the same time, which is the shape of the haircut. So if I take too thick of a section vertically, I'm over directing too much hair and it's going to start to push weight uh, forward or backwards. And what that's going to do is create a longer guide as I transition. So if you're not getting co consistent length uh, on the side, it's probably because you're taking too thick of sections. So now we're going to work on that top part. Pretty simple here. I'm going to take a horizontal parting, kind of following that arc curve. And I want to cut a round shape on the head. So that's going to follow that curve as well. So I take a piece as a guide and I kind of hold that down. I want it to fall right around the nose area. And then that's where I start my cut and I follow the head shape all the way through. Now this is also becoming a stationary guide. So everything that I take, every section that I take, I'm going to bring it over to that point uh, and cut it there. And that's going to give me a round shape but also weight towards the center of the head shape. Um, when, when I talked about, I wanted to be able to have this kind of a versatile, versatile <laughs> easy for me to say, versatile convertible top so that it kind of could go back and forth. She could wear it whatever way she wants. The way that you do that is you put the weight right in the center of the head. So that highest point um, because of the over direction is gonna be in the very center, which kind of creates that mohawk feel as well. So see, I continue all the way through the head shape, bringing everything over to that stationary guide, pushing it away from my body. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, which is going to 
take the shortest part is going to be on the outside and it's going to push the longest point into that center. Also notice I'm doing point cutting. Point cutting is just creating a softer line. Uh, this is definitely a good technique if you have thick hair. Um, so uh, depending on your guest hair type, uh, their density, all of that, you might do blunt cutting, you might do point cutting. For this technique, because it's so lived in, it's, so, uh, it's got that grunge feel, I wanted to do the point cutting to get more texture out of it. Now this is where it's gonna kind of mess with your mind a little bit. As we cut this back crown section, I wanna create a little more of a almost graduation and I didn't want too much length because you've got that top that's gonna be falling over already. So I wanted to create a tad bit of disconnection and notice that I'm going stationary guide. I'm taking diagonal partings, pie shape partings off of the first vertical uh, section and over directing them back to that point. What that's gonna do is push a little extra weight right behind the ear, which is gonna give this uh, haircut, uh, again, another disconnection and a ton of movement uh, when that top part falls over it. Also, when you put graduation under that, it gives it a little bit of structure as well. So you can see, really fun, kind of grungy, messy look. You could wear this almost as a bob as well with the length that we've created. Um, but what she does, she kind of pushes it over, makes it messy, but see how it's kind of a soft bob as well. So if you even went a little bit longer with the length, you could have that kind of feel to it uh, if you wanted. So now I'm half styling it, but I'm really just kind of going through the haircut to see where it feels a little bit heavy and where I want to take out some weight. Now I go in with my dry cutting scissor uh, and I'm going to slide cut through it just to create some texture, maybe remove a little bit of length if I want to on the outer perimeter, uh, but just working through it, creating that texture in the haircut. So just gliding through, sliding through. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Notice I kind of push the top away and I want to work that outer perimeter line and also just take some of that weight out of the haircut. So no matter where she tosses the hair, uh, however she wants to wear this style, it's going to look good. And then the last technique that I'm going to do, because we pushed all the weight into the center, I just want to go through, do a little bit of point cutting to soften that weight even more um, because I want the longest length. So I'm not trying to take that tip off. Um, but I wanted to just soften it just to take out a little bit of the weight. So we go through and I finish that off, everything coming straight up off the head. And then now we're gonna go in and have some fun with it because she always seems to have some kind of fantasy color. So we're gonna use Paul Mitchell Pop XG, uh, simple pure pigment hair color. Uh, I'm gonna use the yellow. So you just kind of put it in the bowl, put it on her hair. She already had previous highlights, which helps. Um, so this is kind of a cool look for uh, a client that already has some previous color on her hair. You could just overlay it just to give it a little more, a little more life, a little more fun. Um, or you could do demi permanent color and put that through it as well um, to change it up. So I think it's always cool to do a little bit of an add on service just to bring your haircut to life. That's my new thing with these videos is not only doing a haircut, but also coloring it to kind of bring it to life to, to really finalize the look. So I'm putting the yellow through those previous highlights that are on her head already. Uh, and that's about it. It's going to add a ton of shine. It's going to fade, which is nice. Uh, it's not a commitment, but it's just something fun that you can do, especially for the fall, warmer hair up a little bit, uh, add a little fun to it. I and mean, obviously this haircut's fun already. So now we're going to style it with invisible wear, uh, cloud whip. So this product's cool because it's got a hold, uh, but it's not extreme. And what I like about Kristen Stewart's haircut is that it almost looks like she just has a ton of conditioner in it. Um, it's not like really like spiked up or, or a hard looking style. So I put the cloud whip in there nice and soft, but adds texture, gives it that shine. And you can see that the style really comes to life. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also go check out paulmitchell.com if you want to see any of these products and get your hands on them. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.